Ken Trahan with Lenny Van Gilder. It's our first NBC Bank weekend review brought to you by First NBC Bank with 32 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond. That's First NBC Bank, proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. Well, the Saints laid an egg when they can least afford to do so, playing horrible football in St. Louis against a below-average team in the Rams, and they paid the price that they deserved in losing 27-16. to And Lenny, this is a head-scratcher. It really is. And uh, there's just something about the St. Louis Rams that, for whatever reason, the Saints do not play well, the Saints do not match up well, whatever it is. And, you know, one of the things, and we talked about this on Friday, they do a great job of getting to the quarterback with their front four, most notably uh, Quinn and Long, and so much so that, you know, Charles Brown found himself on the bench for most of the second half because he couldn't handle Quinn. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out going forward. Uh, the other thing we'll look to see what happens here in the next 48 hours is uh, are we going to see an open tryout for kickers again after a deplorable performance by Garrett Hartley getting a, you know, a, a relative chip shot blocked and another relative chip, chip shot that was a, an awful shank to the left. Uh, the ball was tipped too. Yeah, yeah, apparently so. But yeah. it's um, – you know, it, it's one of those things that, you know, that, that leaves you, you know, scratching your head. But the good news is the Saints are still in control of their destiny. They haven't given that away. But now you absolutely have to win Sunday at Carolina, whereas up until Sunday, you didn't have to win that game. You could have won the other two games and still clinched the division. That's correct. And where the Hartley kicks are concerned, what really concerns you is that both kicks were blocked not as a result of penetration, but guys just jumping up in the air, which is a clear indication that, he kicked the ball too low. Absolutely. And uh, it doesn't, doesn't make, especially on a shorter field goal like that, doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, if you're trying to kick a 55-yard field goal or something to that effect, then you can understand that. But one was, I believe, a 37-yarder and the other was a 26-yarder. No excuse for it there. No, a total blow-up in this performance. Nothing good. They never touched Kellen Clemens the whole game. Zach Stacy rushed for 133 yards. Kicking game gave up an onside kick recovery. It was a total failure across the board, and now it's must-win situation time against Carolina. And, of course, the New Orleans Pelicans started their five-game road trip to the West Coast with a loss at Denver last night to a team that's in the middle of the pack but has some players and a place that's tough to win and clearly playing without Evans and Davis Hurt. Yeah, absolutely. And it was one of those things where they hung around, hung around, but could never make a push to make it a you know one-possession game. Denver just kind of kept their distance in the second half. And you know when you go on the road, you need to be able to make that little push. But again, without two of your best players, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be a challenge. Uh, tough swing here. Nothing's easy on the road, especially on the West Coast, and especially when you're playing some of the better teams in the West. Continues Tuesday night at Golden State. Yeah, two wins would be a really good trip. One would be kind of what you expect, and none would be very, very difficult. So we'll see what happens. Golden State, a very good basketball team that can really score. High school football, the state championships are done. The marathon is over. Nine championship games. I think there were some good stories. There were some good games. It was too long. I think everyone feels the same way about that. And ultimately, there's going to be some more change prior to next year. Yep, we'll see exactly what it is. Uh, it's going to play itself out uh, in the next week. I jokingly posted on Twitter the other day that uh, maybe there's going to be a, a new division out there of just schools on the East Bank of Jefferson Parish after three of them won state championships. You know, so three of the three of the nine, one third of the championships are residing on the East Bank of Jefferson Parish with John Curtis, Archbishop Rummel, and East Jefferson. What a great story there! And congratulations to Nick Salter from Agio and his entire group there for uh, pulling a second consecutive upset, at least on based on the seeds if you will, uh, defeating Edna Carr in the finals. Yeah, you don't want to diminish the accomplishments of J.T. Curtis, 26 state championships, which is absolutely remarkable. Or Jay Roth, who wins his second in a row at Mumble, but the story was definitely East Jefferson's win over a favorite Edna Carr team. Yeah, and uh, a, a great comeback to be able to do it. I mean, they were they were down and made a made a fourth quarter comeback, uh, scored the last 17 points of the game, and that was uh, that was huge. And some other great games as well. A, a terrific story on Friday night with with Union Parish and everything that went b behind the behind the scenes with that. Losing a player in the off season who wore number 33 and they scored 33 points in the championship game. It was just a it was a was it was a fascinating storyline there. Maybe. The best story of the weekend, uh, although obviously in, in, in these parts we're going to look closer at the teams from our area that won, but statewide that may have been the best story of the weekend. And last but not least, of course, we're now the week of the RNL Carriers New Orleans boy. Last check, I think Tulane has sold 7,500 to 8,000 tickets. Any concern that we're not going to get to that crowd level we hope for? 
I think eventually they will get there. Here's the thing you got to consider in this. You got local fans who may be buying tickets not from Tulane and are going to are going to show up. Now, uh, the word out of Louisiana Lafayette is they have sold their first allotment of 16,000 tickets. So they are, are coming in big numbers for the third year in a row, and that's not a surprise. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it's going to be a bigger crowd than it was last year. We'll get to some people suggested maybe 60,000. I don't know if it'll get that high, but I'd be surprised if it's less than 50. Yeah, I agree with that. I think 50 is the number. And Tulane fans, you got to show up or you're going to be outnumbered. And that would be a little bit embarrassing, wouldn't it? I think so. When you're basically you're playing in what's been your home stadium for the last 38 years, your chance to play a bowl game at home for the first time in 73 years in anybody's lifetime, basically. There are probably some people still around who are at that 1940 Sugar Bowl, but still, you need you need to come out and support. So, you know, Curtis Johnson has done a phenomenal job uh, getting this program righted in two years' time. Uh, the future is incredibly bright with a new conference, a new on-campus stadium, and this is really the start of it, so get out and support your team. More on the game later in the week. Lenny, as always, thanks for the visit, and have a great week. Okay, we'll see you later this week. That's our First NBC Bank weekend review brought to you by First NBC Bank with 32 locations throughout the greater New Orleans area and beyond. That's First NBC Bank, proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. For Lenny, I'm Kenny. Have a great week, and God bless.